Hey guys, it's Mecca looking disgusting as usual. So today I'm making a men's Ankara shirt. Basically, I decided to make this video because there are almost no good YouTube videos about it for beginners on YouTube. So I figured let's try and make a beginner friendly video. It may or may not be good, we'll see. Anyway, I'm also working on not making my intros long, so without further ado, let's get started. For supplies, obviously you need fabric. I have no idea how much I use for this, but I'm gonna say two yards is more than enough. Then you'll need matching thread, fabric scissors, pins, and your pattern pieces. This is the shirt piece and this is the sleeve piece. So I know you're probably wondering how I got my pattern pieces and it's very simple. I actually didn't do any measuring at all and just asked the guy I'm making the shirt for to provide me a shirt with non-stretchy fabric that he liked the fit of and then all I had to do was trace that. It really doesn't matter at all that the shirt that he provided has buttons on it. All I did was take the shape of the shirt without the sleeves here I laid a piece of paper on top of that and traced it and then I got this shape. Then for the sleeves, I laid a piece of paper on top of it on a fold. So this paper is folded over and I traced it on top of the sleeve and got this shape. So that way when I open it up, I'll just have one sleeve that I can fold over, but you'll see how that works later. Now what you're gonna wanna do is put your fabric on a nice fold. So this is my fold on this side. And it is evenly folded. And what you're going to do is take your shirt pattern and fold that the same way that you folded your fabric. And now I'm going to line the folds up perfectly and I'm going to pin it all the way around and make sure that the pattern piece is exactly perfectly flat onto the fabric. As you can see, I have now pinned around the entire perimeter of this body pattern and now for the easy part just cutting right along those lines so normally when you are cutting for a person if it fits them if the shirt that you trace fits them perfectly you're gonna want to give it about a half inch um extra space around for seam allowance but because this shirt was baggy on him and um, i want the ankara to fit him a little better i'm just gonna trace right around the pattern and use my regular half inch seam allowance and um, not have the shirt I'm making be as baggy as the Royals jersey was. Now we have this piece which is the piece that we just cut and the rest of the fabric that I have and we're just going to repeat the same thing that we just did. I'm going to move this over to this piece of fabric and line it up to the fold again but this time we're making the back of the shirt and because we don't want the back of the shirt to have the same collar that the front of the shirt has you can go ahead and just estimate how deep you want the u at the back of the shirt to be i would do it around that shape that i've just done and that way the back of the shirt is higher up than the front of the shirts neck is in the end you should have a piece that looks like this as you can see up here i did what I said I was going to do previously and didn't trace exactly how the front collar was and give it a little bit uh, more fabric. 
When you're done, you should have two pieces that look like this, one with a deeper V-neck than the other, and the deeper V-neck is the front, and the other one is the back, obviously. <laughs> All right, quick note that I forgot to mention. My fabric is identical on both sides. There's not a bad side, but sometimes you have fabric that has like a good side that's obviously obviously supposed to be on the outside of the outfit, and then it'll have a bad side that is intended to be on the inside of the outfit. It's a lot easier when you get fabric that has two good sides because you don't have to worry about sewing inside out or anything like that. Um, Mine has two good sides, as I said, so I mean, I can kind of try to explain it for the people that don't have fabric that has two good sides, but just keep that in mind. For the next step, you're gonna want to take either one of the fabrics and lay them on top of the other one. Since they are identical, it's really easy just to line up the shoulders with each other and the armpits with each other. I'm only using one arm right now because I'm holding my camera with the other arm, but I'll fix it in a moment. Anyway, um, if you have fabric that has a good side and a bad side, for this step, you'll make sure that both of the good sides are facing each other, and on the outside, you'll see the bad sides. For people that have fabric that is good on both sides, it doesn't matter, just lay one on top of the other. The sides of my shirt and the shoulders are now lined up. You can see here the dip that is lower, just like in a regular shirt that you wear. Now, the next step is to pin both of the shoulders here and here, and down the sides of the shirt here and here. You're going to not pin the collar or the armholes. sewing um basically you're just gonna sew on the lines that you pinned on so again that's the shoulders here and here and down the side of the shirt down this side of the shirt do not sew down here do not sew up here and do not sew the two what is this <laughs> the two armholes i'd recommend a half inch seam allowance it right side out and this is about what it should look like at this point um this <laughs> mine kind of looks like it's huge just because it's on my dress form that is meant to fit my body size and the guy who I'm making a shirt for is much larger than me so that's why it looks kind of wonky but this is definitely <laughs> what it's supposed to look like right now the head or the neck area is not quite big enough to fit a head so what we do and what most people do on Ankara anyway is we're going to cut a line right here and you can kind of judge however much you want your line to be cut based on how big the person's head is or how big your head is but um, I'll show you guys how far I cut mine so I ended up cutting my slit seven and a half centimeters again like I said you can make that more or less just depending on how long you like the slit to be or how big the head is of the person you're making the shirt for so now we want to make the edges look nice so we're going to fold in all around the perimeter of the neckline and pin it down so that we can sew it
Now you're gonna take your sleeve piece and find a piece of the fabric you haven't altered yet, obviously. Um, once again, we're gonna take the fold, line it up with the fold of the fabric, pin around the perimeter, and cut um, around the perimeter. This time, I would recommend leaving a half inch seam allowance because it's just a lot better to have a sleeve that's a little too big and then make it smaller when sewing it onto the outfit. But if you know what you're doing, you just kind of decide what you want to do. After you cut them out and unfold them, you should have two pieces that look like this. The next step is to make the actual sleeve. So what you'll do is fold each piece in half and you're gonna sew along this line. So this curved line is what attaches to the shirt and this straight line is the hem of the sleeve. So um, this is the part that we need to close and that's what we're gonna sew on both of these pieces. Okay, so once that is done, you should have your sleeve piece and you want to fold it right side out. And it should be pretty clear that it's a sleeve piece now. Um, so this is kind of where it gets a little tricky-ish. You'll just need to be patient. This is always my least favorite part. I hate doing sleeves but it's doable, so let's go. As you can see here, my shirt is flipped completely inside out. I'm showing that just so that you guys make sure. So make sure to do that. And my sleeve piece is actually flipped right side out. So make sure that they are not both flipped inside out. Next, make sure that your right side out sleeve is flipped to where the long part is on top and the short part is on bottom and then you'll flip that into the shirt in that exact direction and this is the most sucky part right here um, you're gonna want to fit that into the shirt and line up the edges of the sleeve to the edges of the shirt Now just pin all around that perimeter and make sure to do this on both armholes. I know it's really hard to see what I'm doing so I'm really sorry but I hope I explained it kind of well enough-ish. This is what it should look like in the end so it's like obviously an armhole and now you're just gonna need to sew around that. Now for my favorite part, hemming, because that means that we're almost done you want to make sure that the shirt is completely inside out and we're going to hem the sleeves both of the sleeves so you want to fold it inwards and the bottom you'll also want to fold inwards all the way around perimeter you'll fold this depending on how long you want the shirt to be so i want mine kind of long so i'm probably just going to fold it in maybe like between a half inch and a full inch and for the sleeves, you'll want the same thing depending on how long you want your sleeves to be. And these I'm probably going to fold in between a half inch and a full inch as well. And just pin all the way around that and around this. I have now pinned the entire perimeter of the bottom. And to make the sewing on the sleeves a little easier, I didn't pin it. I just ironed it down flat to where I want the hem to be so it's a little quicker to sew and I did that to this side too and now I'm just going to sew all the way around on both the sleeves and on the hem of the shirt. Well 
Hello people, congratulations, you have officially made your very own Anka men's shirt. I hope this tutorial was helpful than I feel like it was, <laughs> but don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow my Instagram, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much.